When we launched Palantir AIP in June of 2023, it was to a bombastic response. We've run over a thousand boot camps with our customers where we've taken them through an AI journey in less than eight hours at the speed of light. And that's because we've pioneered this approach to getting beyond chat, to really harnessing LLMs in the enterprise to unlock value, taking the inherently unstructured information that's flying around the enterprise, PDFs, comments, slacks, audio, your video conferencing, and turning that into structured actions and outputs that drive economic value in the course of your workflows inside of a business. And we've already covered nearly 200 use cases coming out of these boot camps, but we're just getting started. One of my favorite examples is with an American industrial company that IT, the IT group very reluctantly came to this boot camp. But when they left, they said they got more done in the eight hours than they had in the prior four months. Now, as you're thinking about your own AI journey, it's important to think about what sort of journey are you on? Because building a retrieval augmented generation demo, a rag demo, or building a chatbot, these things are pretty easy and they're pretty fun, but they're not inherently valuable. And the metaphor I like to have for this is the self-driving car. We had a phenomenal demo of a self-driving car in 2005 that drove 132 miles through the desert. Pretty robust demo. Arguably 2024, nearly 20 years on, and we still do not have a product. I don't think anyone in this room wants to be on that sort of journey. And that's why we are maniacally focused at Palantir on proof, not proofs of concept that we are partnering deeply with our customers to scaling this stochastic genie that is the LLM to actually unlock value in the enterprise and deliver crushing value. We've helped companies change how they build factories. We've reduced the wait list at the NHS in the UK by a third. We're driving health systems to change how they manage patient discharge and bed availability. We're changing how insurance companies deal with insurance claims processing. And we're helping manufacturers material harmonizations where they have hundreds of millions of parts, hundreds of more of these use cases. And the reason I think this is important is that economic prosperity is national security. These are two sides of the same coin. The purpose of defense is to underwrite our prosperity and our freedom. But when we think about healthcare, it is a national security problem that the costs of healthcare are growing faster than inflation and GDP combined. When we think about productivity, it's a national security problem that productivity growth is stagnant. That means that our children's lives are not clearly going to be better and more prosperous than ours. We live in an era where less than $10 billion of private capital invested in SpaceX has put 320 rockets into space. And at the same time, $11 billion of taxpayer capital invested by the state of California has built 1,600 feet of elevated rail. We must retake the initiative. The rate that U.S. companies are adopting AI is eye-watering. They are using it for stunning effect. And you can look at this geopolitically. Europe is paralyzed. They are trying to study the problem. They're analyzing how to regulate the problem. They're wondering if it might go away. And I've seen U.S. industry roll up their sleeves and seize the initiative. And that's really important because AI is an empirical journey. You cannot think your way through it. It favors the inductive and the iterative, and that is an American strength. Our government is at its best when it's implementing, not just regulating technologies. It is the hard-earned operational experiences that drive the precision and the correctness in the policy that we implement. We should ask ourselves the question, what will our chief AI officers be? Will they be implementing AI, disrupting and transforming their organizations, or will it be capturing AI for status quo interests? In broad strokes, I think it's no surprise that the U.S. government has been a little slow to adopt AI, that we have more task force studying safety independent of use case than we do have task forces implementing AI, that we're thinking about policy independent of results. We're not yet on the empirical journey. So we need to accelerate. And the only way forward is, is really to start building faster in real operational contexts. The other enormous opportunity with AI for America is that AI is for builders. And we need to build a lot in the present moment. You know, at the dawn of World War II, America was the best at mass production. That's how we built the arsenal of democracy. But we're not anymore. But we are the best at software by a yawning margin. There are zero 
globally competitive enterprise software companies from India or China. Think about that. And that's not because we're smarter. It's, it's really, it has everything to do with culture. It is not a coincidence that the AI revolution started in this country. And you might think that that culture was imported from Israel or from India, but no, it was actually imported from Iowa. This, this unique technology culture is rooted deeply in Midwestern values. It's what Bob Noyce, the co-inventor of the transistor and the co-founder of Intel, brought to Silicon Valley. And that's really hard to replicate. And the other part that's really important is at the beginning of World War II and into the early Cold War, there was no defense industrial base. There was only an American industrial base. Chrysler had a missile division. General Mills, the serial company, made inertial guidance systems for ICBMs. Pontiac made machine guns, and Goodrich was not a tire company. And we should remember that it, when it came to World War II, it wasn't Northrop Grumman, it was Jack Northrop. It wasn't Martin Marietta, the predecessor to Lockheed Martin, it was Glenn Martin. It was Howard Hughes. It was Henry Kaiser. It was the innovators within government itself, like Kelly Johnson, who built the U-2 in nine months and 40 airframes in his entire career as the founder of Skunk Works at Lockheed. It was Admiral Rickover, the founder of the Nuclear Navy, and, and Colonel John Boyd. In America, we understand intuitively that there's something special about founders. There's a reason we call them the founding fathers. When we think about that last supper that Bill Perry had in 1993 in the Pentagon, we had won the Cold War. At least the Soviets had lost the Cold War. We needed a peace dividend. The budgets were going to get slashed by 67%. Not all of the 51 defense primes were going to survive. Now we only have five. The real consequence that people think of when they think of that event is a lack of competition in the industrial base. That is not the deepest consequence. The consequence is that consolidation bred conformity, and conformity is not an environment that crazy, creative American founders can survive in. But that moment has changed. More than $100 billion has been invested into defense tech. The founders are back. Let us end the famine of the Last Supper with a first breakfast. How do we support the founders as they go forth and defend our nation and bring us prosperity? This is a broader movement for the entirety of this ecosystem here. But Palantir's contribution to the first breakfast, uniquely building on our 20 years of experience trying to create a wormhole between modern American software and the Defense Department, is to help accelerate these companies' journey, help get them to revenue faster, help them integrate into the workflows we can field a huge amount of software, which again, we happen to be the best in the world at, between now and any potential conflicts. There's not that much exquisite hardware you're going to be able to field in that same period of time. So our first focus is with FedStart. You know, delivering software to government requires you to deliver accredited software. That is a two-year, $2 million journey of brain damage. Most of these companies can survive the $2 million, but two years is, this is a meaningful part of the so-called valley of death unable to raise capital, unable to demonstrate traction, unable to unleash the creative forces of our founders here. So with FedStart, Palantir changes this problem to take weeks and tens of thousands of dollars, fundamentally helping more of these innovators succeed. But I'm also excited to announce a new offering today, our joint all-domain command and control, or JADC2 software development kit. This is going to make it possible for every builder to run their applications on top of our operating system to very quickly essentially plug into the kill chain, to integrate with the workflows that warfighters have, to integrate with the data they have, and to do so at the speed of relevance to the mission. So whereas FedStart means that you're going to be able to continuously and seamlessly plug your AI into the Department of Defense, the JADC2 SDK means that you'll be able to seamlessly integrate with the workflows that your users actually have. I think this is, this is the meaningful protein of the first breakfast. So one more uh, product announcement I want to make. We've, been, we've released a whole slew of mixed reality offerings. If you come by the booth, you can check them out. Uh, but one I want to call out in particular that I'm excited about that is for builders is our mixed reality OSDK or ontology software development kit. Uh, this kit is going to enable partners and customers to build spatial computing or mixed reality applications that leverage the breadth of enterprise data. And it's the same underlying technology that powers Palantir's own IC2, or Immersive Command and Control Technology, that we have recently demonstrated at PCC4 at the National Training Center. 
And I think it's going to enable entirely new approaches well beyond traditional mission command in terms of maintenance, repair operations, uh, field coordination, teamwork. We've also been pushing this uh, on the commercial side with Panasonic Energy North America, battery manufacturer for Tesla batteries, who've been able to use this on the factory floor. But one more thing, to launch builders, uh, to, to really mobilize AI for America, we want to announce Build with AIP today, a library of quick starts, reference implementations, and tutorials that are going to get you building very quickly with AI. The first 400 people who are able to use this QR code can sign up and get their own developer account fully featured. It's going to enable you to learn by doing, to learn by building. Use cases from GPT Vision to analyze images, similar to what Lindsay was talking about with the CDC, to ontology retrieval generation, uh, to tutorials on incorporating expert feedback into your AI. So much more. And I think this is really important because, as I said earlier, AI is an empirical journey. Let's roll up our sleeves. Thank you very much.